Today, Representative Lee Zeldin attacked during a campaign event. Chinese citizens are protesting outside of banks and a pro-LGBTQIA plus apostrophe S curriculum school employee was just arrested for, you'll never guess, pedophilia. We've got all of that and more coming up and it all starts right now. Welcome to the News and Why It Matters. Happy Friday. I am Sarah Gonzalez, and it is another Blaze TV family kind of day. We've got Steve Dace, of course, host of The Steve Dace Show, uh, and we've got the whole Steve Dace family, really. We've mm. got Aaron McIntyre, producer of The Steve Dace Show, along with Todd Erzin, who is a contributor for The Steve Dace Show, along with co-author of The Fauci and Bargain, which the two of these guys wrote together Highly, highly recommend that you get this uh, this book, and we are just so happy for you guys to be here. I know I've shared this with you before, but fun fact about myself, I am like a huge Steve Day Show fangirl. I well, listen we, to you guys every day. We appreciate that, and, and you know that I always try to contribute uh, and give back to the little people, as you know, Sarah. And <laughs> yes, so that's why I'm just here. very honored for the first time to allow my underlings a, a chance <laughs> to step into my world and, and just to know what it's like to fill the ample shoes that I wear. Mm, mm, the, I'm all about the coattails. That's my whole career. <laughs> just just clinging, ride them as long as I can. Clinging to them. Um, I'm really, I really am glad that you guys are here. Um, so let's get into the headlines of the day. Well, yesterday evening, Representative Lee Zeldin was attacked by a man wielding a sharp object at his campaign event. This was near Rochester, New York. Uh, he was not injured. It's actually a really bizarre, we have a video of it that I'm about to play. It's kind of a bizarre uh, event because the guy comes up and he clearly has something in his hand, but he's not doing it like very passionately. He's kind of slow. Um, I'm not sure what to make of it. Let me, let's play, let's play this. Lee Zeldin getting attacked during a campaign speech. Watch. There's only one option. So uh, if you, you know, watch that, he has the, I, mean, I guess you would call it a knife, but the, you know, they sell these frequently to women as, as self-defense weapons mm -hmm. that you have the two prongs uh, with the two holes that you put your fingers in and so that you can quickly stab someone. But he was, it was weird. He like casually walks up. You would think that if you're going to try to do this very quickly that you would maybe run. Uh, he casually walks up. He's obviously doesn't do it quick enough to not be stopped by Lee Zeldin himself who pushes him away with enough time to have people, some people from the crowd actually come up and tackle him. Uh, but you can hear him saying, you're done, you're done, as he is unsuccessfully, of course, trying to stab Lee Zeldin. Uh, gentlemen, your thoughts, this is where we're at. I, I, a couple things about this stand out to me. Uh, if, if, you know, we, about a month ago, they tried to assassinate Brett Kavanaugh. Now you have this with Lee Zeldin, who just 72 hours ago voted to codify, <laughs> you know, um, uh, the destruction of marriage as an institution into mm -hmm. federal code. If if Brett Kavanaugh and Lee Zeldin, I mean, if if they are if they are uh, priority targets, and they're fairly tame, uh, you know, members of our I guess broader coalition, I can't even imagine what the spirit of the age thinks about mm -hmm. the people sitting at this table mm -hmm. and the folks that are watching us around the country right now. That's number one. And then number two, though, that last line uh, from Lee Zeldin's Twitter account, the tweet that we showed, uh, that he is likely to be instantly released under New York's laws. Keep in mind, as we speak right now, there are people who owned no weapons, did nothing violent mm -hmm. whatsoever, Yes, there was a riot, but we also have video of people being invited into the Capitol grounds by the by law enforcement, by security. 
and they they are threatened with indention, indefinite detention for something called interference with official acts. They're denied all forms of habeas corpus, treated like they are political prisoners in North Korea. This guy wields a deadly weapon at a member of Congress and a gubernatorial candidate. He might be out on bail, you know, tomorrow morning. Oh, he's already out, actually. Or this so, morning. Yes, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm glad that you brought that up. So he was charged with uh, attempted assault in the second degree and uh, released from police custody within hours of his arrest, so. Something we talk about on the show and a name we seemingly are invoking with more frequency these days is John Brown. And if you don't know, John Brown, he's the radical abolitionist who resorted to violence on occasion. And uh, we, we've been bringing up his name, begging the question, how do you get John Browns? You look at the overall state of society where they shut us down for a virus with a low CFR and IFR. They force us to mask up. They try to push a vaccine on us. They steal an election. I'm sorry, fortify an election. <laughs> and then they tell you, you cannot question any of this. That's how you get John Browns. What happens after John Brown? What's the next step up above John Brown? They're going to pick off a Brett Kavanaugh. They're going to pick off a Lee Zeldin. That's going to... That's, that's going to throw avgas on this trajectory mm. that we're on. Mm -hmm. That's very dangerous. Sarah, you mentioned sort of describing the bizarre casualness with which yeah. you went up there. But then it's bizarrely casual that this guy would be released right away. And that is true. the point mm -hmm. of all of this for it to seem... Like you don't, have, if you want to commit some sort of assassination, you know, get in, get out. Mm -hmm. They were trying to establish the fact that we get to do whatever we want, whenever right. we want, however we want, and it's just going to be the new normal. Mm. Yeah, I, you know, Steve, you brought up, you mentioned the January Sixers, who mm -hmm. I guess are just going to rot away, some in solitary confinement forever. It's the wrong thing. Right, right. Yeah. But I mean, it is a great parallel to make because you know you have mainstream left-leaning lawmakers who are encouraging people to do these types of things, take to the streets, go, make them uncomfortable, get up in their faces, and seemingly there's never any repercussions right. for this. So it's 36 days until the college football season begins, and, and you have that ugly, idolatrous logo on your phone there, but I don't blame you, okay? <laughs> I, I married into it, to and, be fair. And, and, and what I'm about to say, I don't say because I'm rooting for this. I'm rooting for the America where I get to count down how many days until the college football season yeah. begins. That's why I'm going to say what I about, I'm about to say, because I'm worried that it's hanging by a very slim thread. Mm. Probably the last time I'll ever be invited on CNN, I would imagine, is I did Brian Stelter's show on the Sunday morning after the ball field shooting out there, the softball shooting in uh, D.C., and if you guys remember that story, what was that, 2017, 2018, I think it was, uh, the only reason that they didn't scrape Rand Paul's remains off that field and pull, haul a bunch of body bags out of there is because Steve Scalise played in that game. And so because he was a member of House leadership, he came with his own security detail. Just imagine, there's a million things that you think a member of Congress has to do on a given day uh, on top of being a husband and a father other than playing a ball game. Imagine his wife just calls him up on the way out innocuously, oh, I need you to take so-and-so to school. Mm -hmm. uh, fellas, I can't go. That whole event turns out a lot differently. You're looking, you're looking at a Fran, and I think I used this analogy on CNN, a Fran, an Archduke Ferdinand moment. Mm -hmm. One assassination takes a powder keg and just lights it on fire. And these are the kinds of things to go along with what Aaron just said. And Oh, and now we're at the arrest this man stage of the argument. Ah, wrong think. You're just indefinitely detained. Okay, 69-year-old cancer-stricken grandmas who never hurt anybody. Meanwhile, you had Ashley Babbitt shot in cold blood, we, and no justice for her, but cancer-stricken grandmothers will go to prison for a couple of months. And, oh, by the way, you're, you're even, now you're going to come after, like, our squishes? Like, the people, like, we don't even like wearing our jersey. Now you're going to come, violently come after them. We are... Man, we are on a precipice here historically, which leads to events like Fort Sumter's and things of that nature, where people begin to think that the traditional system cannot be, cannot satisfy them. It will not air their grievances. It will not even, even if they lose, at least it was an honest loss, that their voices are unheard. And, and our people own 200 million guns, Sarah. I, I, don't, I don't know who came up with the strategy. Let's go assault the people, the candidates that the people who own 200 million guns like. Like, I don't think that's a great strategy, but yeah. YOLO, okay? <laughs> but, but eventually, if we don't figure out how we can aggressively confront this, 
within the system, I am afraid of how aggressively we'll have to confront it later outside of the system. Mm-hmm. And I don't want that to happen. Yeah. I want to I sit here and remember that it's 36 days until the college football season begins. I, uh, Aaron, Steve brought up that Lee Zeldin was one of the people who just recently, one of the 47 Republicans who voted to codify same-sex marriage. And I, I think that that's really important to bring up because I remember as I was reading all of these people's names, I'm like, they're never going to accept you. It's never going to be mm-hmm. enough for them. They will never accept you. Correct. It doesn't matter how much you capitulate to them. They will not accept you. And here we are. No, that's precisely correct. And I, I think kind of dovetailing off of that and, and what Steve said as well, this trajectory that we're on, if you're like me and you believe that truly what we're up against is not just the Democrats, it's not just academia, it's not just the apparatus, the physical apparatus of the modern left in the United States, what we're up, up against right now is the doctrines of demons, that this truly is a spiritual battle. The trajectory that we're on even though we're the ones that own the guns. Mm -hmm. Hell wants that confrontation. It just wants, as Steve says, just wants a body count. Mm -hmm. And so that's why this is so, so important, yes, but uh, just um, horrific Mm -hmm. because of the trajectory that we're on, where this could go, and knowing that the forces we're up against are totally fine if it goes there. Yeah, Todd. Well, the Zeldins are the secret sauce of the crazy people because they they can smell the acquiescence mm-hmm. on them. I mean, they, they just mm-hmm. can. And for far too long, I've said it on the sh- uh, show many times, that be, especially being a male is not a leisure pursuit. And w- we need to be way, make ourselves way more uncomfortable on a regular basis in just how we live our lives so that we have the kind of orientation towards how we do business on every level that that bizarre casualness that Mm -hmm. I just talked about, Mm -hmm. they won't think twice of it. I mean, did you see, I've seen it just on my phone, but seeing it blown up the first time, I want to find out who that, I I saw one guy in there in seconds. Bam, 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 bam. Yeah. I want that. Yeah, yeah. Um, All right, before we go, just to wrap up this segment, to throw this out for you guys, see uh, what you think of it. A New York City family has given Governor Kathy Hochul's campaign hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, while the state has paid the family's company more than half a billion dollars. This is a, an entrepreneur who donated close to $300,000 to the campaign. And uh, New York paid hundreds of millions of dollars for COVID tests from this particular company. So $637 million in taxpayer funds for COVID test kits. I have a feeling you guys are really shocked to hear that the health department did not do any sort of competitive bidding before <laughs> awarding this company this sum of money. I'm, I'm sorry, $300,000 for over a half, what, half billion? That's, yes. that's, that was that's my kind of skimpy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Kathy sucks as a politician. <laughs> yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. Do yeah. better. Not, I dare you to do better than that. Not Goodness, a good even, our, even their corruption is terrible. <laughs> I expected better than that. Which part of COVID from the beginning until now? Name me one wasn't a scam on some level. Preach. Pick. Yeah. And here is exhibit whatever, yep. 666. Yep. Yeah. I can't, I can't name you one uh, because there isn't one. Um, all right. We've got, to, uh, we've got to take a quick break. We'll be back with more. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Home Title Lock. So, look, home title fraud, is, uh, it's, a, it's a big deal. The FBI called it uh, one of the quickest growing crimes. And you should feel confident. You should feel, I, I guess I should say, you should feel glad that if you don't know what it is, you don't, because that means it hasn't happened to you. But that also means that uh, it could. And if it does, which is uh, when a cyber criminal manages to hack his way into your home's title, they can take out loan after loan using your home's equity. If it does happen, all of your retirement nest egg is gone, and then you have to be left to prove that you didn't commit fraud. Don't let that happen to you. You've got to get Home Title Lock. Uh, they are the only company that will notify you in the event that this happens. There's no banking program. There's no common identity theft program that is going to do that, but Home Title Lock does. So you've got to go there, go to the website, register your home address to see if you are already a victim, and when you register protect, to protect your home, uh, there's going to be a little space for you to tell them that Sarah sent you that way. You can get 30 free days of protection. That is Home Title Lock. Dot com, hometitlelock.com. 
Chinese citizens have been protesting outside of uh, their banks since April when customers discovered that they could not withdraw their funds from the local banks. Uh, thousands of depositors made the run on the banks after the government arrested a majority shareholder in several of the banks for what they called serious financial crimes. This is according to Chinese media, so take that for what it's worth. Hmm. Uh, so um, they, there were all of these protests, and in response to the protests, the local authorities uh, weaponized China's COVID-19 health code apps. I'm sure you guys are shocked to hear that they hmm. would be weaponizing uh, something that they had developed for COVID-19 for crowd control. Um, and in late May, bank depositors, some of whom didn't even attend the protest, reported that their health codes had turned red after these protests at the local banks. Uh, they, they continue getting uh, more violent, more tense, these protests. And uh, we have a video here I'd like to play. Watch. They're saying return my deposit for those of you listening on podcast. Now, there have been uh, questions around a, a, a recent video of China deploying tanks against protesters. Um, so what we know, what we don't know about that. A little over a week ago, it was reported that uh, the authorities announced the bank depositors would be able to withdraw up to $7,442 from accounts that have been frozen since April. Uh, there were videos that began circulating this week, uh, obviously drawing comparisons to Tiananmen Square. If you guys want to play that, there that is. And now fact checkers in the United States are saying that these videos took place in a different province in China and are not connected to the banks. Uh, they were, in fact, part of a hotel, I'm sorry, part of a military exercise, uh, which some have suspected could be in preparation to invade Taiwan. Routine. <laughs> of course. Routine military exercise. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Uh, smoking tanks down the street. Yeah. Let who has not driven a smoking tank <laughs> down Main Street cast the first stone. Indeed. I mean, so it's it's hard to say because, again, I brought up as I'm, tell, I'm telling the story, I'm like, I mean, this is according to Chinese media. So who knows? But I find it to be a little troubling that a bunch of Chinese citizens are protesting outside the banks because uh, they kind of need access to their own money. It's a crime in China to want your own money, right? Yeah, yeah. We were, we were discussing just, I think, yesterday. Uh, why, what's going on in China? Mm -hmm. Why hasn't it invaded Taiwan yet? Yeah. Given the clown show we are projecting, how weak we are, pro the weakness we're projecting, how we supposedly had to defend Ukraine to not project weakness to China, but now we're gonna unilaterally actually end up underwriting Ukraine's defeat, which will just project more weakness to mm -hmm. China. So what, it doesn't make any sense here. And we finally came around to the amount of internal issues they have going on there right now with the regime. Mm -hmm. And if you go to pre-COVID, Remember where things stood pre-COVID, before they began to spread their bio uh, uh, virus uh, at the, at the uh, military Olympic Games in 2019, before they started to do that, they were facing unprecedented civil unrest in their chief financial district of Hong Kong. I mean, Tiananmen Square level of protests were going on there mm -hmm. with, with people that were not happy that now the habeas corpus, the civil liberties that they had going back to being a British colony, the Shai Coms are not going to take those away. And they were amidst in a, you know, bone on bone trade war with, with Donald Trump at the exact same time. Mm -hmm. So there, they were facing internal dissent guys and hegemony control that they had not faced for many, many years. And so that's why they did the lockdown, I believe, in Shanghai that they did earlier this year. If Hong Kong is, its, is the financial district, Shanghai is the richest district in China for personal income. It's the most literate, 97% literacy. And I think they did that draconian lockdown to send a message to the rest of the country. If, hey, if we're going to do this to the, I mean, we shut down Disneyland. If we're going to do this to the crowning jewel of China modernity, we will do this to all of you if you step to us because they have some serious infrastructure systemic issues going on right mm -hmm. there. And that's what, the, well, that's what that video shows. Bringing up Shanghai, I think, is, is so important because, um, you know, we've played on the show. I, I hated to do it, but, you know, you had all of the, these people jumping out of their, you know, windows, their balconies whenever they, they're locking them down. They're not allowing them access to food. Uh, there's people screaming. I'm sure you guys saw that video when it, mm -hmm. when it played. And I think it's just, you know, we have this this video of these people being locked out locked out of their their banks and i just think it's so important for america to remember i mean we gripe all the time about how horrible we have it here um but uh i think it's important to put things in in perspective yeah i it's simultaneously true i think that china may have peaked in its power and yet might still be the most powerful country on the face of the planet because of all the tentacles that they, uh, that they have around the globe, including here in the United States. 
Uh, because what you've seen them do, especially over the last year, they've revamped their online education, they've outlawed Bitcoin, they've completely attempted, I guess, a financial sector makeover mm -hmm. uh, beginning last year as well. These are not the actions of a regime that's confident or secure in their position as it relates to their own citizens. And Sarah, I made this prediction on our program, the, the, the Friday program, the Dace Group, a few weeks ago, that regardless of what happens with Roe v. Wade, it will be more difficult to, be, uh, to, to kill your baby in China and within our lifetimes than it will be for half the country here in the United States because of what they've done. We will have lived through one-child policy in mm -hmm. China to they will outlaw abortion because they are also facing a demographic mm -hmm. winter in the near term. Uh, so I do think this, I do think we're seeing the birth pangs at least of China's power and influence having peaked. Whether that was for the United States, our power and influence peaking in the 40s or 50s, you still didn't want to step to us for another you know, 50, 60, still don't want to step to us. Doesn't mean they're going away anytime soon. Mm -hmm. But I do think stories like this are, are indicative of the fact that they may have peaked. Still very dangerous though. Yeah. If this was in isolation, in China, I, I'm almost certain I'd be encouraged that finally uh, they, they crossed the line there. But here's the problem, just on Twitter today, this guy posted and he's right. Civilian protests are going on in the following countries, Denmark, Sri Lanka, Italy, Panama, Australia, Cuba, Puerto Rico, France, Malawi, South Africa, Germany. You might say, well, even better. The crazy voices in my head though, like this, are we being pushed to this, this is great reset stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, if it's going on everywhere, is this? Are we being Weimar Republic? Basically, yeah, is this what they yeah. want on some of it? I can't get that creepy thought out of my head. Mm. What do you think? Yes, mm. I, I think that we live in an era, and I'm not comfortable with this either. Mm. Okay, I mean, I, I'm a few years ago when Alex Jones was the tip of the spear on social you know, big tech censorship. I'm like, I'm not. Lincoln arms with the, you know, the, they're making the frogs gay guy who puts in his own, um, you know, paternity suits, his defenses against his wife. Everyone knows I just say some of this stuff for effect. I'm not doing that. Yeah. Yeah. And now after the last 28 months, I am yeah. now Alex Jones with Bible verses. That's where I'm at. Okay. So, and, and I, this is, Ukraine actually ties into this too, because of what you just said. In Ukraine, we don't have, this isn't the Soviet Union invading Afghanistan. What you have here are two, you have a cabal of megalomaniacs versus a megalomaniac, mm -hmm. okay? And so really they're just arguing over which megalomaniacism will reign supreme. Will it be the corruptocracy of Ukraine versus the thugocracy of that, that, that Putin runs with his oligarchs? And, and if you don't see that level of nuance when regimes like China, because, and Aaron, I think, articulated the nuance that Todd's talking about perfectly, that they may have peaked in their power, but they are still a very formidable foe at the exact same time. You, we, we live in an era where our audiences need to be willing to believe multiple things at the exact same time that can be true, that maybe in past eras would have seemed to be in conflict, but because we're undergoing this unraveling in, in the West of all absolutes and all certainty, there's going to be things now that at the, in the past that may have seemed to be in, at odds with one another that are simultaneously actually occurring and true. Yeah. Um, all right. We've got to uh, we got to take another quick break. We'll be back with more. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Sweatblock. Steve, you've, you've used Sweatblock, right? I have used Sweatblock. I, in fact, I brought my Sweatblock uh, man parts deodorant with me. You probably didn't want to know that information, but <laughs> more than ask, me, they had that. ask me no questions and I'll tell you no lies. All right. So there you go. Well, I mean, they told me it was 110. So hell yeah, I, I brought the say. man parts, uh, so the Sweatblock man parts deodorant. Yeah, you bet good, I did. Good for you. Yes. No, well, that's, that's the thing is that here in Texas, I feel like we're like the, the perfect uh, test people for sweat block because they have these, you know, they have the regular deodorant, they have what Steve was talking about, which I wouldn't have any personal <laughs> experience with. And they also have the wipes, though, the antiperspirant wipes that, that they can work for up to seven days per use. And I know this because my husband uses them and we're in Texas where, as Steve mentioned, it's 100 billion degrees and he is still not getting like the gross pit stains that are really embarrassing for everyone. So you're going to want to make sure that you check sweat block out, especially Especially since it is uh, it's July and it's really freaking hot. Uh, so if you are tired of those embarrassing sweat rings, if you're tired of not being able to wear whatever you want, you got to give Sweatblock a try. You can try it risk free with a with the promo code news. You'll save 20% off over at Sweatblock.com. That is Sweatblock.com promo code news. Nancy Pelosi's fled 
her press conference uh, earlier today. This is really good. Actually, I think this was yesterday, uh, after being asked whether her drunk husband, Paul, you know what, actually, I'm, I, I feel bad for saying that, because... Wouldn't you also be drunk, perpetually drunk, if you were married to Nancy oh, Pelosi? Oh, gosh. I feel oh, like boy. we got to give him a pass on that. Don't drive drunk, all right? But we understand why you're in a drunken state, Paul Pelosi. Uh, she was asked whether her husband, Paul, has ever traded stocks based on information that uh, her Nancy Pelosi has relayed to him. Here is that awkward exchange. Watch. So I think we have to go now. One more, he said. Yes, sir. Uh, over the course of your career, uh, has your husband ever made a stock purchase or sale based on information you specifically have? What are you saying? Uh, over the course of your career, has your husband ever made a stock purchase or sale based on information you received from you? No. Oh, absolutely not. Wait. Okay, bye bye. Uh, her comments come on the heels of a uh, Daily Caller News Foundation reporting on a financial disclosure showing Paul Pelosi purchased up to $5 million worth of stock in a computer chips company before a vote on legislation that, of course, would hand billions to uh, semiconductor manufacturers. I'm sure that that's just all a coincidence, guys. All a coincidence. You definitely make the kind of money that you make when you are worth what Nancy Pelosi is worth just holding public office. Who doesn't get richer? spending a, a lifetime in public office, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, right now, somewhere Mitch McConnell and Elaine Chao are watching this and they're thinking, <laughs> we got to get a cut of that action. <laughs> we thought we were good at this, right? And we can't, we can't be outgrifted by the space cadet Nancy Pelosi. I, I think if, if there is one kind of creed of political analysis, that is the, that's the best line of 2022 so far. It is Christina Pushaw, who is Ron DeSantis's communications guru, her. and she she has a set on her man. Mm -hmm. She's tough, and and she uses this phrase when these kinds of stories come up. It's not hypocrisy, it's hierarchy. Mm. Because what we do, you know, you, you you get out the conservative media handbook, you know, you look at the news items of the day, and you're like, here's how we're supposed to troll this and own the libs on that, and right, we we get in our own ruts about, you know, look at the left wing hypocrites, and our fans all click on the headlines, you know, and they're in their, you know, uh, carbon footprinted private planes, and <laughs> and their insider training scandals, yeah. and how much better they are than us. It's not hypocrisy, it is hierarchy. She's right. They're better than you. Mm -hmm. They're superior to you. You are. You will eat the bugs, and you will enjoy. They're not going to do it. Yeah. I mean, they're going to be. They're going to eat kosher steaks like you guys had last night with Daniel. All right. <laughs> I mean, you're going to. You will uh, bike to work. They're going to private plane. I mean, John Kerry just said this a few months ago. My work's frankly so important that I need to, you know, burn up the atmosphere. I'm trying to save. Mm. And so I, I think that is something that, because it's very. It, I think it is vastly important to help get our people prepared and encourage them to the level of peaceable but aggressive confrontation that needs to happen before we get to the dystopian future that you guys were talking about. Mm -hmm. And if we keep going with the liberal hypocrisy talking point from 2002, that ain't gonna do it. Yeah. We, need to, we need to really goad our people with the truth. They think they're superior to you. I mean, this, this is, it's let them eat cake, Sarah, every single day. I, I think, I mean, just to kind of add on to that point, um, I think you have to look no further than, you know, it was, they were fine when people were burning businesses to the ground, when people were burning cities to the ground. You come to their doorstep, mm -hmm. as my friend Eric July calls it, their cathedral, mm -hmm. and uh, put their feet up on Nancy Pelosi's desk, and now all of a sudden, you're a huge criminal. Excellent point. It's, the, well, it's that bizarre casualness mm -hmm. I talked about again. She, the, the, the drunk driving thing didn't happen that long ago. Yeah. In the past, it's lay low time. They're like, yeah. oh no, we're turning this thing up to yeah. They're like out there in <laughs> right the open. Should a weekly because, press briefing like the next day. Because <laughs> you can't touch me and let it just be said. That's why I drink, because I watch clips <laughs> like that on a regular basis. <laughs> if I was married to her, I'd be Nick Cage and leaving Las Vegas. <laughs> I had not seen that clip. I mean, I, I love her reaction like, oh, I've never even considered I'm such a conversation. Serious, man. No, yes. please. Now That's I can hear you. Oh, no, I've never even considered it in my life. <laughs> um, this, this reminds me of, just quickly, the conversation Todd and I had one time before Steve came in for the show. I can't remember what prompted it. Before you finish talking bad about Steve, sure. before he came in the room. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, I can't remember what the prompted it. The buffer conversation. <laughs> yes. But Todd said something to the effect of, you ever just wonder how much of what we see 
every single day is just complete and total BS. Mm -hmm. This Nancy Pelosi qu uh, story with Paul Pelosi buying, what is it, $5 million of stock in NVIDIA, it's got me asking that question again. How many of the votes that we see taken by people in Washington aren't really about the crux of the matter or the issue being debated. They're just about screwing somebody else over who has stock or some other uh, special interest riding on this piece of legislation. That, that type of stuff drives me nuts, but then again, it's been happening since before I was born. So. Yeah, um, I want to get to uh, the White House, Karine Jean-Pierre, who oh, we all we know have to? is the, yes, we have to, Steve, because okay. she is the best press secretary of all time. Uh, a great example of affirmative action, anyway, and how that can be such an abysmal failure. But uh, the White House tweeted out this video of Karine Jean-Pierre celebrating gas prices falling below $4. Yay. Thank you, Joe. Watch. Hey everybody, so gas prices have been declining across the country. In the past more than 30 days, we have seen gas prices go down by more than 50 cents per gallon. So let's get into some graphs. This is so exciting, guys. Oh my in God. The graph. So in more than 20,000 gas stations just across the country, as you'll see in this graph, you will see gas prices less than $4. Wow, are you guys so excited? I've, I've I'm not, confused. I've, I've not seen that video. Who, who is their target audience for that? <laughs> so I thought we were supposed to be happy. High gas prices were supposed to be uh, resulting in more purchases of electric vehicles. Also, I thought, aren't we supposed to be thanking Putin now for the right? Well, he did down? get the That's he true. did get the I'm credit so, for so them confused. going up. I mean, up. he's 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 clearly winning in the war in Ukraine. That thing's coming to an end here. Where everybody's getting tired of funding it. Even NPR is asking, is Ukraine corrupt? <laughs> Things that would have been nice to have been told like yesterday, right? Um, and, and so uh, I guess he should get credit for the, the, his, the fact that he is routing our resistance in Ukraine at this moment. Should he get, get credit now that he prices should. might be going down? I think so. What's fair is fair. Todd, last word. Todd is so you know, over it. I, I loathed <laughs> her predecessor. Yeah. Who, she was, she was not stupid, Jen Psaki. No. But she just. She was smug. A, a smug, obvious liar. Yeah. This is different. And it seems <laughs> like there is just a checklist over there that somebody's taking the different ways they will flat out mess with America's head and, and, and watch. What, if we won't burn it down at this one, well, we got them there. Let's try this one. And they're going to exhaust that list of the stupid we will take. And apparently it's a lot because I love your voice. I can't do your voice yeah. is, is the epitome of <laughs> the reaction you should have. What I, You're talking to America yeah. like this is carpet time in kindergarten. <laughs> And sadly, it does resonate with way too many that I'm comfortable <laughs> with. Uh, all right, we've got to uh, we've got to take another quick break. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Buy Optimizers. So one of the best things you can do to improve your health is get at least seven hours of quality sleep every night. And I know, I realize, I'm in the boat of, uh, hey, I don't have time to sleep, all right? I got a bunch of things to do. I got kids. I know the feeling, but it really is important because your body heals itself when you sleep, and if you're not getting enough quality sleep, you're increasing your risk of disease. You're making it harder to lose weight, and a really easy way to get more quality sleep is to get enough magnesium. Around 75% of people are deficient in magnesium, which could explain why so many people have sleep problems. That is why I recommend Magnesium Breakthrough by Bi Optimizers. You're gonna take two capsules before you go to bed. Uh, you will be amazed at how much better you sleep, how much more well-rested you feel when you wake up. I take it, it, it does wonders for myself and my family. You guys have to try it. You got an exclusive offer over at magbreakthrough.com slash news. You'll save up to 42%. That is magbreakthrough.com slash news. Use code news at checkout. A Michigan public school employee who had staunchly advocated for LGBTQIA plus apostrophe S curricula to his district school board has been arrested as part of a police sting operation targeting local pedophiles. I know, you guys, again, you're really shocked to hear that uh, when we say they're coming for your kids, they are quite literally 
Coming for your kids, this is 41-year-old Eric Roman, an employee of Mount Pleasant, Michigan's public school system. Uh, they, there was this sting. They saw more than uh, saw two more alleged child predators put behind bars, and uh, along with other two other men, Eric Roman was arrested at an undisclosed location. All three were arrested for using a computer to commit a crime and accosting a minor for immoral purposes. They said police alleged that the three communicated over various social media apps with decoys posing as children and uh, they were accused of going to a location to have sex with a child where they were arrested. And this man, again, shocked to hear he had previously promoted LGBTQ curriculum and mocked parents at a school board meeting. Let's watch a little of that. For the last five years, I have had the profound privilege mm. of working with your students. I bet you feel that way. With your students. Mm -hmm. With your students. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you this, they are hungry for knowledge. Mm. They are so hungry for knowledge that despite your words, your wishes, your values, they will learn on their own. Mm. So many of your children are hurting, questioning, struggling in this world that we have created. Ultimately, they will become who they will become with or without us. Give them the chance, the grace, and the support to embrace their own learning. They're gonna do it anyway. Man, I did not see that one coming at all. If convicted, he should be executed. Mm -hmm as should all other culprits. Um, there was a case in Michigan a few years ago that largely escaped a lot of our platforms because the whole groomer thing was not really on the front burner yet for an issue, and it, and it appeared to be an outlier. Uh, but I thought about it because this also stems from Michigan. And this case in Michigan involved a high school, uh, a high school teacher who was having uh, sex with a young male student. OK, and uh, he was charged by police. Uh, they put him on trial. He was convicted by a jury. And at his sentencing hearing, several of his fellow teachers came to the hearing to testify on his behalf uh, that he should be granted leniency because all he did was just have sex with a gay kid. OK, and the kid was passed in their view. He's a teenager. He's been through puberty. He knows what he is. He knows what he wants. Um, and therefore, you know, he's capable of giving consent. And there's just no way if this had been the other way around, if this had been a male teacher who had, had sex mm -hmm. with a 14 or 15 mm -hmm. year old female student, there is no way there is in none of the nine realms in the Marvel Cinematic Universe would, would, would the peers of that teacher had shown up at his sentencing hearing and said, hey, you know what? She wanted him. She wanted it, man. He, she, he wanted he wanted she she went into the teacher's lounge and said, take me to pound town. What'd you expect? Like how hot she is. Fresh fruit. He would have never done that. Yeah. This only works one way because it's not about sexuality and it's not about behavior. It's about, an, it's about an ideology and about a dogma. And it's why I call these schools Satan's youth ministry. That's what this is. It's a procurement. It is a, there are, there's very few things that we have done messaging on the right in my career where we got it right the first time and completely outflanked the other side of the argument. Grooming is the one. That's why they're now begging to ban it because they know that. And if they do, we should just skip right to, we'll just call it right to predator then how yeah. you like them apples okay yeah. because it, it it's the, it stings them because that's exactly what has been going on this entire time there is no means through these relationships for you to naturally have your own children to to pass on your legacy to pass on your heritage and so what the rainbow jihad as i used to call it what it uses the schools for therefore is to procure that heritage that legacy we recruit or groom them into into these beliefs in order to get them to act out and then we pass them on there that's how we that's our progeny your children are our progeny that reminded me of khrushchev at the un back in the 50s the famous video where he took off his shoe and he pounded it at the podium and said we will bury you and your children that's essentially in a very in a, in a, in a very effeminately masochistic way from a rain from the rainbow jihad perspective that's essentially Todd what he was saying right there we will own your children well last January when uh, one of the pornographic uh, books uh, gender career was making mm -hmm. across the nation well it came to our, uh, my children's school too which isn't going to be there 
uh, children's school anymore because we're basically refugees after what happened. But uh, it was, the, the groomer the term back then wasn't ubiquitous yet. I'm not saying I started it, but I, I used it purposely yeah. back then. Here's what happened. I got a letter uh, and I used the teacher who was in charge of the LGBT community there uh, in my tweets. I got a letter from the state teachers union saying immediately cease and desist or we will sue you. I got a call from the police saying you're harassing her I'm using this on no. Twitter. This is because I, I'm not, I, I never accused them of actually doing what they did. I use that word, though, mm -hmm. because short of the action, they are that guy. They plan on taking your kids away from you, like I said, and it's getting increasingly casual in its creepiness. They don't want it to be a secret. They want, it's, it's, it's a few good men. They want to say it out loud. Mm -hmm. And here we are. You need to take that seriously. That's the pit of hell you just watched. Are you saying they take pride <laughs> in doing this to yes. your kids? Yes. Yeah. Oh, don't. Yeah. Uh, Aaron, I, I try to find some silver linings for COVID because it's just, all of it is just so horrible. I know you guys are like, I'm preaching to the choir here. Yes. But I feel like one of the silver linings was parents were a little bit more alerted to what types of things these teachers were, were infiltrating their lessons with. They were listening on the Zoom call and went, wait a second, why are you telling my mm -hmm. child about that? And, and I feel like, if, like there are very few silver linings, but this is probably one of them. It's funny you bring that up because that's kind of where I'm going with my thinking on this. You know, discrimination used to be a positive character trait, actually. <laughs> The way that we reach a type of culture, a type of atmosphere that we want to be at, where this type of monster doesn't even think to show his face, is that we create a culture that is so discriminating that I'm not even gonna say stuff like this in private, much less in public, for fear of what I will be branded mm -hmm. as, for fear of what they will do to me. How do you go, how do you though, how do you force somebody to be held accountable? This guy should be executed, you're correct. When life is made intolerable for the people who you empower, who you empower to do something about the things that you care about when they don't actually do that. Life should be intolerable for them when they are not carrying out your wishes. Mm -hmm. So the way we make life intolerable for the groomers is we make life intolerable for the people who are entrusted to do something about them if they do not. Yeah, amen. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, we gotta take a quick break, we'll be back. Did you see that? Yesterday, uh, Jill Biden was heckled while getting out of her car, and she responded by pretending bizarrely somehow that the, the hecklers were supporting her watch. Your president is the worst president we've ever had. Hi, thank you. Thank you, hi. This is so good. I just, I, you know what? Couldn't happen to a more deserving person. That's Karen from the cul-de-sac, right? Getting out of, <laughs> except she gets out of the Subaru and then does that. Thank you, yes, right, isn't that, that's great. Touching, special, yes. All that was missing as the reporter, what'd she say? Let's go, Brandon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe she shouldn't have compared um, Hispanics to breakfast tacos. I don't know. Indeed, everyone knows you compare Hispanics to dinner tacos. Everyone knows this. Breakfast tacos are, I will say, she was saying that they were unique. I don't, I'm, I am Hispanic. They're not unique. It's just eggs, meat, yes, and cheese. Yes, I can get the, in the frozen tortilla. food aisle. Yeah, you always compare unique. Hispanics to dinner tacos every, <laughs> that you make fresh. Everyone knows this. Uh, things are not going well. There's a there's a guy on, I know we've got a couple, what, 30 seconds left. There's a guy on Twitter, I think, or no, Instagram. It's Shaney Rich, and he does these man-on-the-street videos in L.A., and he so he talks to a lot of minorities, a lot of, of black people, and he asks them, what would you say to Joe Biden if he were here right now? And they're the best videos. Oh, boy. Because they're just like, kiss my ass. <laughs> <laughs> they're pissed. They're mad. It's so good. I encourage oh everyone oh to go watch those. Uh, gentlemen, thank you guys for being thank here. Thank you. Uh, Steve, you Aaron, Todd, and uh, don't forget the vaccine special coming up. It is only on Blaze TV. You can use promo code unsafe to save 20% on a subscription. Just make sure you watch it.